Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome back to Versus. Today, big, bold, and blue luxury leviathans from the deep go head to head. Now, rewind a bit. In 1953, Rolex and Blancpain more or less invented what we would describe today as a dive watch. The Blancpain 50 Fathoms and the Rolex Submariner really are the plank owners in that particular sports watch class. But like old Navy shipmates, they've grown apart over the years. The Blancpain's gone up market, bigger sizes, bigger prices. And Rolex, well, the Submariners become the equivalent of a treasury bond for your wrist. Enter the Rolex Deep Sea. Bigger and groaning with high-tech spec, it's the Rolex Challenger in the oversized luxury diver class. Whereas the Blancpain might ordinarily be compared to that other oversized luxury sports watch from Le Brasseau, this is a showdown made in heaven. Or perhaps Tinseltown, Hollywood being the inspiration for the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue, courtesy of director James Cameron. Does Blancpain still have what it takes at the head of the luxury class in the dive sector, or is the James Cameron gonna pull off a Hollywood ending? Let's find out. First, let's talk about the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller Deep Blue. The 44mm Deep Sea Sea Dweller launched into rather stormy seas in 2008. Unfairly slated at the time for killing the Sea Dweller 40mm, the Deep Sea was the black sheep of the Rolex diver family until a late 2014 Hollywood makeover transformed collector perception and market demand for the biggest Rolex. Loosely based on the events and imagery of director and Rolex ambassador James Cameron's 2012 dive to the ocean's deepest spot, the Deep Sea Deep Blue was to the moribund Deep Sea what Iron Man and sobriety were to Robert Downey Jr.'s career. And while redesigned for 2018, today's feature explores the 2008 to 2017 iteration that is more common. 44 millimeters is the case size, but subjective wrist feel suggests far more. Solid end links of the bracelet extend the span across the wrist to 55.6 millimeters, which is nearly the lug-to-lug -lug wingspan of an IWC Big Pilots watch. And the deep sea is 17.8 millimeters thick. This might be the thickest Rolex to reach public hands since its spiritual ancestor, the ultra-scarce Deep Sea Special of the 1950s and 60s. The Deep Sea is the most extreme expression of the modern case profile nicknamed Super Case by collectors. Common Super Case traits include squared-off lugs and sheer sides of towering proportions. The Deep Sea's take on these conventions is as stark and imposing as the battleship Missouri. Wrist presence is epic. Rolex employs its long-running 904L low-carbon steel en masse with the Deep Sea. Recently rebranded as Oyster Steel, it's corrosion-resistant up to a level more hypothetical than likely. The helium escape valve, which prevents crystal expulsion when surfacing from saturation dives, sits in its customary slot at 9 o'clock. It activates when internal pressure exceeds external by approximately 2-3 to three bar. And aside from a handful of old submariners from the Comex era, this has been a Sea Dweller exclusive for more than half a century within the Rolex line. Allow me to introduce the world's best diving clasp. Rolex Flip Lock offers 26mm of instant all-or-nothing extension, but the Deep Seas reference 98210 bracelet and clasp offer Rolex Glide Lock on steroids, fully adjustable in 2mm increments out to 20mm. This version can be adjusted on the wrist in order to prevent accidental droppage in marine environments. Subs and Sea Dweller 43s must be removed for clasp adjustment. The dial is what makes a Deep Sea Deep Blue what it is. First, here's the movie poster for Cameron's documentary about his dive. A photo is worth a thousand words. The dial's glossy gradient fades from surface blue to deep sea dark with a shock of green to represent the film-friendly mini-sub. White gold indices, hands, and of course Rolex crown offer substantial legibility by day. The 2008 deep sea marked the launch of Rolex's distinctive blue chromolite loom. For everyday users, Rolex's ring lock case construction is both fabulous but fatuous. Comprised of layered rings of internals and bounded by case back and 5.5mm sapphire crystal, the arrangement is designed to compress and self-seal as pressures build. About that sapphire, its real-world benefit comes from thickness that can shake off submariner-shattering blows and the optical impossibility of fitting a Cyclops eye magnifier, a cleaner dial aesthetic results. For the true diving pro, this thing is ISO 6425 compliant like a boss. 
Rolex actually tests each deep sea to 125% of its 3,900 meter rated depth before the watch departs Geneva. Bezel business includes a ratchet tent that feels distinctly Rolex. This is nothing like the chunky chatter of an Omega Planet Ocean or Panerai Luminor submersible, and details matter. The Deep Sea's Bezel Pearl is a complex multi-layer assembly with a scratch-resistant sapphire dome. Rolex fits its tried-and-true caliber 3135 automatic to every deep sea made from 2008 to 2017. Now, automatic winding employs a jeweled staff rotor pivot, bi-directional action, and Teflon-based reversing wheels to favor refinement above all. 48 hours of power reserve is far from the Blancpain's five days, and even the 2018 Deep Sea's 70 hours pales by comparison to the rival from Les Brassoux. Toughness, on the other hand, is unarguable. With a full balance bridge against the Blancpain's partial bridge, a chunky profile over six millimeters thick, and many corroborated stories of extraordinary abuses overcome, the Rolex power plant gets the nod for absolute durability over the Blanc Pain. Moreover, Rolex offers guaranteed chronometric performance. The Geneva Giant gets the COSC chronometer certification on its bare movement, then cases the caliber and assures minus two plus two seconds per day, the first substantive basis for Rolex's long-running superlative chronometer dial declaration. Blancpain resurrected itself in 1982 under Jean-Claude Biver. It then joined SMH, later Swatch Group, in 1992. The iconic 50 Fathoms Diver resurfaced in 1998, and the model seen here launched in 2007 as the poshest pool party watch yet conceived. But the 50 Fathoms narrow timeline precedence over the Rolex sub, it did debut first, military credentials on both sides of the Atlantic, and serious high horology hardware make it a legitimate rival to brands as disparate as Rolex and even Audemars Piguet. The standard 50 Fathoms sports a polished steel case that's too glam rock for most dive watch purists. The 5015D in satin steel, by comparison, is a grunge jam for the dive watch traditionalist. Blancpain's case is more complex than the deep seas in every respect. Lugs, bezel and case stand apart as separate sculptural elements. The use of satin finish mutes the case's size and visual impact, as well as volume. Vertical satin grain on the case and lug flanks is also a thoughtful and distinctive aesthetic touch. Rather than fix its strap or bracelet options with cheaper spring bars, Blancpain takes a page from AP's playbook with screws. Blancpain's X71 bracelet is as revered as it is rare. Highly regarded, the option adds up to $5,000 versus the conventional base price of a steel 50 fathoms, so even Blancpain's luxury clientele tends to settle for the standard sailcloth strap. Comfort comes first with the X71, and the use of small intermediate links enables wrist feel that's closer to Rolex's supple president bracelet than the Deep Sea's chunky oyster tri-link. And aesthetically, the X71's intermediate links provide a seamless chain with interlocking male-female link profiles. The dial of the Blancpain trades Rolex's blue gloss gradient for a Kyoshe stylized mass of metallic blue. The blue treatment of the dial is characterized by an undulating radial cut pattern at center and a satin-grained metallic outboard. Quarter Arabic numerals provide a living link to the look of the 1953 original, albeit with masses of Luminova and white gold appliques. Blancpain minimizes the intrusion of the date window far better than the Rolex. While the Deep Sea's date is more legible, Blancpain offers a monotone blue disc at 430 that disappears when not actively sought. Modern 50 fathom bezels are living legends. Bathyscaphe accepted, the domed sapphire on a 50 creates a killer troika of luster, 3D depth, and scratch resistance. Blancpain effectively references the thermoplastic bezel cap of its original radium loomed 50 fathoms while creating something new and thrilling. Due to the protection afforded by the full sapphire, Blancpain is able to loom the entire range of calibrated print on the bezel. Its loom light reads like your own private Aurora Borealis. Blancpain's caliber 1315 debuted in 2007 in the current model 50 Fathoms 5015. As with most Blancpain calibers, this one has been created for the brand by its Swatch Group movement supplier, 160-year-old Valet de Jeu caliber specialist Frédéric Piguet. Technically manufactured Blancpain since the 2000s, Frédéric Piguet and its relationship to Blancpain allows the company to claim in-house status for the 1315. 
This automatic movement is based on the Ultra Haute de Gamme Blancpain 13 RO manual, and the payoff is a five-day power reserve motivated by three main spring barrels in series. Unidirectional winding gives the system a slight efficiency advantage over Rolex's bidirectional arrangement. A free-sprung balance helps to ward off effects of shock, but the single-sided bridge of the 1315 caliber is marginally less stable than Rolex's full balance bridge. Regarding finish, the Blancpain Caliber 1315 combines mechanical and manual finishing execution that is both more beautiful and more time-consuming than Rolex's competent but industrial execution of the 3135. And now we reach our roundup. First, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. Advantages, many. Sapphire bezel and domed crystal simply look rich. A fully loomed bezel means that the watch is more usable and looks more special by night. Fine finish inside and out is assured. It feels less like an industrial product than the Rolex. For traditionalists, the minimal date window vanishes when unneeded, and depreciation close to $5,000 means that it closes the price gap to the deep sea. The high horology caliber 1315 trounces the Rolex 3135 on power reserve and, admittedly unseen, finish. Now let's consider the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue advantages. First and foremost, the best diving clasp in the industry, with both incremental and flip-out extensions. The Blancpain has no diving features in its clasp. Rolex's absurd 5.5mm crystal is more resilient against fractures, even in the real world of shoreside adventures. The Deep Sea is actually tested to the extremes advertised on the dial and beyond. This is a modern diving watch, whereas the Blancpain is more of a nostalgia trip. The Deep Sea boasts, in deep blue form, what might be the most attractive gradient fade dial in the business. This one puts Patek and AP's efforts to shame. Finally, a five-year warranty and close to zero depreciation make this the obvious choice if you're going to buy one of these watches new. And now we reach decision time. Rolex's Deep Sea Deep Blue is both more fun than the original Deep Sea and more wearable than I expected. Its dive-specific technology makes the Blancpain appear stuck in 1953, and if you want the ultimate modern Rolex sports watch to use as advertised, this is it. An engineer might pick the 50 Fathoms on the basis of its movement, but fine finish inside and out means that an artist might make the same choice. I'm a little bit of both, so the 50 Fathoms remains my daydream diver. It's my pick from this pair.